Hey everybody, this is Dr. Michael Shear. In this training video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can align an intraoral scan to a reference denture scan using 3Shape software. So to get ready for this, what I've done up to this point is, is I've generated two different case files in my intraoral scanner. Number one, I've gone ahead and I've presented with a patient wearing an edentulous denture, no implants, it could have no locators or anything in place. And I've gone ahead and I placed my locator abutments onto the implants. Patient's been wearing that denture for a period of time, comes into the office. Now we're ready to go ahead and do our final impressions to go ahead and now make my locator over denture or my locator fixed prosthesis. Now I take the patient's denture and I'm going to do a reline impression on the inside of the patient's denture over the top of the locator abutments, not the housings or the scan bodies, the locator abutments, and have the patient close into occlusion while doing the reline procedure. I remove that from the mouth and I 360 scan just this denture. I scan the opposing arch and then I scan the bite with the reference denture in place. That's my first case. Second case is, as I go ahead and I take out the patient's reference denture, pop on scan bodies onto the locator abutments, and then make a direct intraoral scan of the patient's jaw with the scan bodies in place on top of the locator abutments. Now, once we have those two separate case files, I can go ahead and refine them, do all the things that I would normally do in my 3Shape software. In this particular example, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take my refined intraoral scan with the scan bodies in place, align them to the reference dentures. It's pretty straightforward for us to go ahead and do. I like to go ahead and have a dummy patient set up in my 3Shape dental system software just for these alignments to make it very simple to go ahead and work in, in the 3Shape software. Alternatively, there's a secondary approach that you can go ahead and use just the direct uh, denture module within 3Shape, align things and do it that way. Um, step one, let's go ahead and do just the alignment so that way we can set it up in any uh, dental software such as 3Shape or others. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So to go ahead and begin, I've got my dummy patient where I've got my locator alignment patient and I'm gonna open up a work order so you can see what my dummy alignment scan looks like. You can look at my other intro, uh, my uh, YouTube videos on how to go ahead and do this, but I've created a patient with a fake crown on tooth number eight. So you see here, I've got a fake crown just for tooth number eight. I call it some you know name that I can easily reference again in the future and then a little bit of a note. I'm going to go ahead and very importantly make sure my object type at the top says digital impression. That will give me that functionality that I need. Click the OK button. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset this because I already have my existing scan on here. So created. Yes, I'm going to reset it to created. Now I'm going to right click and import scan. By doing so, this particular alignment function, it's important that I bring in the reference denture scan as the part that I want to align something to. Anytime that I'm doing this alignment function using the quote unquote dummy patient, you want to import the reference denture scan first. So the lower 360 scan, the opposing prosthesis or whatever it is in the opposing in occlusion. Then I'm going to align that intraoral scan of the scan bodies to the reference denture scan. So I'm going to open up my reference denture scan folder and it's going to ask me for the upper jaw. So I'm going to open up my max CD opposing, which is the patient's upper denture. Do I want to use the existing scan? No, because I've, I've used my dummy patient for other tasks. I'm going to open up the antagonist, which is going to be the reference denture as shown right in here. Click open. So we're simulating here a mandibular arch, upper CD with a lower CD with relined locator abutments. And I want to align the intraoral scan that's refined. So coming back to my patient, once I've imported the reference denture and the opposing arch, I'm going to go ahead and then right click and then hit the design button. This will take me through the prompts, like it's going to go ahead and try to make a crown. And that's okay, we're not actually gonna make a crown here, everybody, I'm just using the functionality in the crown design module, which will help me refine the denture scans, then also go ahead and import and align additional scans to it. Now, once 3Shape opens up, we've got our occlusal plane that comes in as default. 
Now we're not going to go ahead and start here. We're going to step back a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and clean up the upper and lower scans, similar to like what I do in other techniques. Step number one is I left click on refine upper jaw scan. The intraoral scan of the patient's edentulous opposing upper has a few artifacts that need to be cleaned up. So I'm left clicking where it says select all and clicking the refine button, allowing the software to go ahead and clean up any of those areas and make for a very nice scan. Once it refines the scan, we can go ahead and left click on refine lower scan to go ahead and clean up the lower scan. Since this is a referenced Entra 360 scan on my intraoral scanner, generally it's usually pretty good coming from the intraoral scanner, but you can see here I don't have any artifacts found at this point. Now I do like to go ahead and utilize this refine function. This is typically where I like to align. If you jump forward to like the occlusal plane or to the soft tissue trimming model, sometimes that gets a little bit messy. We're going to go ahead and do the alignment within the refine functionality. So under this refine lower jaw scan, I need to import my other scan. I'm going to left click on this button where it says additional scans at the bottom right. And then I'm going to click on the load button and then this smaller load button down here at the bottom. As I go ahead and I do so, it's going to give me the opportunity to bring in the intraoral scan of the patient's edentulous arch with the scan bodies in place. This is a refined scan that I utilize the alignment function to go ahead and make a nice refined scan of the patient's arch already. Once I go ahead and I bring that in, I see there's an additional slider up here at the top. This is my intraoral edentulous scan that's refined for my intraoral scanner. And here's my reference denture. The idea is, is I want to go ahead and take this intraoral scan right here and align it to that 360 lower denture. So now it'll be at the correct orientation compared to the upper. Before moving forward, I need to designate what arch to go ahead and align to. So I'm going to left click where it says jaw, choose the lower jaw to go ahead and align this to the lower jaw. Once I go ahead and I do so, then I can left click this align button right here. And this will give me the opportunity to go ahead and move things around. Sometimes it helps to go ahead and jump in and out of these functionalities just so then that way it gives the, the software a chance to go ahead and think. Then I click the move button and I'm going to go ahead and bring this file over bodily. Just left click the file and then these, these tiny little orbs that I can go ahead and rotate this scan around until it's about at the same orientation as what you see here on the left hand side of the screen. That's pretty good. And now looking at it from underneath, I want my left hand side of the screen and my right hand side of the screen to look pretty similar. And that'll give a pretty good idea. So then that way when I'm aligning it, it gives me three different points where I can easily align to. Now at this position, I can left click on the alignment points or selection. There's two different key ways to go ahead and align your intraoral scan to the reference denture scan. The align points functionality is the simplest. Usually you can use either one or three points or a selection to go ahead and align a surface area. I prefer to typically use the points alignment. I find that's typically the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. Now I'm going to left click where it says three point alignment and I need to choose three spots to align the right to the left. And typically on an edentulous search on the lower, it's going to be like a retromolar pad. And typically I want to find similar little bumpy anatomy between the two. Now, if I had locator abutments here and locator abutments here, I could probably align using the locator abutments. But since these are scan bodies and a scan of the locator abutments, I have to use soft tissue functions to do so for the alignment. So like right in here, I've got this little bumpy crease down here near the retromolar pad on each side. I'm going to left click on each side to choose those two similar places. Same thing over here on the right hand side. I've got this little bumpy little area right here, this little bumpy area here and here. And then same thing here on the anterior portion of the ridge. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is choose maybe a little bumpy area here on the anterior. It could be a tori, it could be a little bit of a soft tissue little bump or something of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and use just this anterior portion of the ridge right here and then right in here. So I've got my three points in the green, blue and red should match on either side. When I left click the align function, it will take the scan on the right hand side and then merge it to the left hand side. And by doing so, I now have the proper alignment for the left and the right. And I can toggle these on and off based upon 
these areas and see here how that would relate to the upper arch. To verify this, it's also very important that I can go ahead and use a cut function. So as I do so, I'm going to take this just like so. To use the cut functionality, it's right in here where it says 2D cross section. I'm going to left click that and then draw a line using my left click through the model. And this will give me an opportunity to go ahead and see where my two lines intersect. That looks pretty good. And I may want to repeat that just to verify that it's in the right position. Overall, that looks pretty good. And I can slice through this. And I'm verifying that these two little sets of lines are in similar positions on each side. I can repeat that on this side, or I can use the, the built-in software functionality to go ahead and do a quick assessment of it. Overall, that does look pretty decent. Now, at this point, I've aligned these pretty well. I can now go ahead and export these files out of my dummy patient. So I'm going to turn off all my layers, except for we'll start out with the lower reference denture scan. Left click the Save button, click on Save Model, and then I can go ahead and choose the patient's lower. So I left click that patient lower jaw scan. And you have to be careful because if I have multiple scans in here, I can go ahead and mix those up. So I'm going to left click just my lower one and then click on the Save Model button. And now I can go ahead and export that to a file here. Three shape aligned scans. And we're going to pull up that folder. And I can either save it as a DCM, STL, or whatever file format. But let's go ahead and call this man jaw scan. Uh, this will be the reference denture, denture aligned. Repeat that here for the upper. Save model, STL file, max opposing aligned. And then finally, my intraoral scan, left click. It's that scan file right here, save model, save type, STL file, jaw scan aligned. And we can put in here scan bodies. Now, before I exit the software, it's a good idea to go ahead and check these. So I'm going to pull up the three shape align scan folder, and maybe I'll just go ahead and open up Mesh Mixer. So I'll dump all of these into Mesh Mixer. Now within Mesh Mixer, it gives us a chance to go ahead and look at the upper, lower, and then the edentulous scan. Turn these on and off. I can go ahead and move these files around. Here's my lower denture, and I can look at it from underneath. And typically I want to see a pretty even amount of this kind of mottled appearance everywhere that you see right in here. And it looks like I've got a pretty decent alignment, but I think I can do better because there's a little bit of a couple of spaces right back in here. Let's see if we use the selection tool to go ahead and get us a little bit more surface area to align to. So back within our scans right in here, here's our align scan. If I don't like how that just the points function works, I'm going to go ahead and open up my additional scans function again, click on align. And now I'm going to move my scan back to kind of like the side by side mode that you saw earlier. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on the selection tool. So when I click instead of just points, I'm going to go ahead and click selection, combining that with the points, because I want the software to get a little bit more data of how to align to. So typically, I'm going to go ahead and use my left click and define a, a much larger area of surface, staying away from those scan bodies. Come in here. I'll scan by choosing soft tissue areas in between the scan bodies. And then this edentulous ridge in here. And then the retromolar pad area as well. So overall, that does look pretty good. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit right in here too. Sure, why not? Pick up those as well. Great. Now, most of that should be on this left side. We just don't want to scan too much. 
make sure that I've got all this red surface area between both sides. Left click on the points button. And I still have my three point alignment chosen. I need to tell those software those same three points that I defined earlier. Here and here and then here and then here. So those same three points, now let's click the align button, see how that works. And that looks pretty good, everybody. It's slightly different from what it is before. But I like that, that does look good. And I'm gonna do a cross section on here. Yep. It looks like it aligned a little bit better than if I just use the points function. Bring that across. And that looks pretty good, everybody. So at this point, I feel pretty good about that. I've already exported my upper and lower, the 360 denture and the opposing. I'm going to save just this one file and we'll see if there's any difference in Mesh Mixer. I left click Save Model, choose STL, and then right in here, let's call this Aligned 2. Coming back into Mesh Mixer, I'm going to drop this into my Mesh Mixer, click Append, and let's see if it's in any different position. Any ever so slight difference. Now at this point, we can see here, we've got our upper, lower scans now properly aligned. I can go ahead and X out of these. We feel pretty comfortable with how that alignment is. I'm gonna right click this top right X, save the design, and now I've got three clean STL files that I can go ahead and work with within any design software. There are some other alternative ways to align using, utilizing a similar methodology within the removals module. But this way is a pretty straightforward universal way that works for most applications you know, within the dental system software. My name is Dr. Michael Shear. Check out some additional videos here at my YouTube channel.